Today I'm going to be reviewing the new Lux Archival Sanded Paper from Brush and Pencil. Brush and Pencil sent me a pack of this paper to review. So just for transparency, this was provided to me by them for the review, but the review is my own. I'm not being paid to say anything specific. I'm just giving you guys my opinion. The first thing we're gonna go over is just the claims that the packing makes. It says that it's an excellent support for all drive mediums, such as colored pencil, pastel, graphite, charcoal, etc., as well as various liquid mediums. White surface makes applied transparent and translucent colors shine with brilliance. Now that's kind of a big deal because the other sanded papers out there like you are or Fisher 400, those are a kind of tan color and off-white. This is a true white. So your colors are going to be more I guess true would be a good way to put it to what the pencil itself is, which is pretty cool for those initial layers. The It is archival and compliant with ISO 111108, will not yellow, darken, or deteriorate in any way and will last 100 plus years. That's a big deal. So kind of a side note, as it turns out, you are, um, any of the you are, or Fisher 400, those are the two that I personally tested. If you take a pen that tests for acidity, you use them a lot in like scrapbooking, they're very easy to come by, and it will let you know if a paper is acid free or not. The back of those sanded papers, not acid free. Yeah, they don't tell you that on the packing, packaging. I'm a bit irritated with that because they talk about it being all acid free. Okay, well, if the back of your paper is not, that can affect the front of the paper over time and that does concern me. Now, how much it will be affected, I have no idea, but I'm not happy with that at all. If I want all aspects of the work to be acid free. And if you're thinking, why does that matter? Because if something is not acid free, it will start to yellow. It can become very brittle over time. So it's not going to be archival. That artwork does have a much more limited time than when you're working on 100% front to back, everything's acid free. So that's a really, really big deal. That's something that I, that alone would make me switch to this paper. I would learn to like it if I didn't like it was kind of my attitude going into this and we'll go into that more so the other claims on this extremely durable allows 30 or more layers of dry art medium multiple corrections erasers and reworkings without damage to the paper sanded surface is even and consistent without any visible patterns that's a really big bonus there was one of the sanded papers i reviewed a while back had some it wasn't as good. Um, we'll just go with that. Water, alcohol, and odorless mineral spirits resistant, which allows for application of dry and liquid mediums without buckling the paper. It is acid-free. We covered that. The one that I'm working on, this is an eight by 10 inch pack, 140 pounds, 100% cotton. Before we get started on this review, if you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where I've got the two hour and 15 minute long demonstration for you to follow along with there. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my past Patreon videos. There are over 200 of them there, along with a new one every single week. Those are generally going to be one to two hour long demonstrations. If you're not sure if Patreon is going to be a fit for you, I've got a two hour long colored pencil demonstration that you can head over and check out. It's on my Patreon library where you can also see what demonstrations I have available for you there. The link for that will be in the video description. So for this one, I started the background on a live stream. You can see my first impressions of the paper there. I will put a link in the description and have a card pop up if you'd like to see how I got to this stage. So the first things that I noticed with this paper, one, it doesn't, like the pencil, you don't get as much fallout. If you've used sanded paper before, you know you do have a fair amount of product fallout where the pencil as you're working, I mean, you're essentially working on sandpaper and you will have some of that pencil fall off the paper. And I didn't have that happen anywhere near as much with this as I have with either the UART 500 or the Fisher 400. Those were the two sanded papers that I had previously used. The Fisher 400 was my preference before now. So throughout this video, that's really what I'm going to be comparing it with because Fisher 400 really was my primary way to, well, my primary sanded paper. So, and you will see me use that again, just because I have a lot of it. I think I'll use it more of as a test because um, I don't want to totally waste it, but I also don't want to use it on projects that I'm going to be selling because it's not acid free on the back. I'm not a fan of that. That was a bit disturbing to realize. Now, the, like I said, the Fisher 400 wasn't as bad as the UART 500, but still 
So it's concerning, not a fan. So moving on, as I'm going through this, if you've not used sanded paper before, your pencil comes out really highly saturated very, very quickly. So you feel like you're burning through your pencils really fast, but in reality, you're just getting more coverage faster. So you end up sharpening your pencil a lot because so much of that pigment is getting on the paper very quickly. Like I said, not you really didn't have an issue here with the fallout. Now, I am using Powder Blender to blend this. If you are unfamiliar with Powder Blender, I have a video showing you, walking you through like your first project, how to use it along with reviews on the product. When I first tried it, I will put a link to both those videos in the video description. So as I layer this, I'm just slowly building up, just seeing how many layers I can get turns out a lot. It does take a lot. I never hit a point where I couldn't get additional layers. Now, I also do use texture fixative from brush and pencil when I work in colored pencil with, or with powder blender. So that's going to add a bit more tooth to the paper as well. So just all around great combination of products. So and just basically starting with the background, I was able to quickly tell this is my preference. The, the lack of pencil fallout, like it felt like I got color saturation so much faster than I did on the, the Fisher 400. Now, if you've only used Fisher 400 or another sanded paper once or twice, you might not notice the difference. It's not going to seem like that big of a deal to you. But as somebody who has completed so many projects on those papers, it was really noticeable to me. So that was a huge, huge bonus. And I really like that the paper is pure white. So if I want to leave some of that white background showing through, the color just seems to be more pure. Like I can get like the yellow over it. I can get a more pure, clean yellow, a brighter yellow than if I were working on the tan paper. There, there was an area where I made a mistake. I kind of smudged the dark where I didn't want it. So easy to fix mistakes. You just go right over it because it has so much tooth. You're able to really get good coverage. Now, it has a lot of tooth. And you've heard me say before when I work in colored pencil, I typically would work with hot press watercolor paper because it does not have a lot of tooth. You want to find a good balance of what type, you know, how much tooth versus if it's too much, you may not like it. Not enough. You know, everyone's got their preferences. But this, you would think having that much tooth, you're not going to get the fine detail. Like a cold press watercolor paper is not my preference for colored pencil, like if I'm blending with OMS anyway, because it's too rough, too much tooth. So when I first heard about sanded paper, I was thinking, well, I'm not going to be able to get the detail I want. And that's definitely not the case. I find that it's easier to get detail on the sanded paper because of the way you can layer. Look how I'm taking this yellow and putting it right on top of black. That would not happen on like hot press watercolor paper. The color wouldn't really show up. And here, everything sticks. You can go through, let's say you like drawing wildlife. You can get whiskers. You can just draw white whiskers on and it will show up over black. Whereas on a hot press watercolor paper or Bristol vellum or whatever it is you prefer to work in, you know it's hard to get those details. I actually use Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture from Brush and Pencil. I'll have a card pop up showing that to paint in my white highlights. But with sanded paper, you really don't need to. If I go over something with a white pencil, it's going to show up no matter how dark whatever is underneath is there. I mean, it'll blend in and mix in a little bit, but it will still really show up. So as I work on the eye, I'm just blocking in my general lights and darks, I'll come back through and clean everything up in a bit. But you can see I can still get a lot of decent detail. And this is not terribly big. This is only an 8 by 10 So if you wanted more detail, of course, it's easier to, to do that on larger paper. And one of the other things that I really like about working on sanded paper is how fast it is. Sanded paper puts powder blender together. Oh my gosh, you will get your projects done so much faster than something on the same size on watercolor paper with odorless mineral spirits. No, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I actually really still enjoy working with OMS on hot press watercolor paper. I, I don't plan to give up one for the other. But if you want to get something done a bit faster and then getting the smooth out of focus background like this, so much easier to do on sanded paper than on hot press watercolor paper. Now powder blender, I'm just, I've, like I said, I've got videos going over that completely, but essentially it's just going to help me to blend everything a bit more smoothly. So when you see me come on with a sponge, so those blue handled handles with the sponge on the end, those are soft tools. Those are the little teeny, it looks like a makeup applicator, those little sponges. That has a product called Powder Blender on it and it helps my colored pencils to blend even more smoothly than they would on this paper without. Do you have to use powder blender on sanded paper? No, sanded paper can be used without. It's been used without forever. You can use it with pastels, um, apparently graphite. I've never tried it with graphite. That's definitely gonna be something I try coming up in the future. 
Remember with Powder Blender, that product you wanna use either on gessoed paper, so I will airbrush gesso on paper, a little more work than I'm willing to put into it. I've done it, it looked great, or on sanded paper. Those are really the two options you wanna go with. You don't, Powder Blender just doesn't work the same with other types of paper, even pastel matte. Now pastel matte and sanded paper, like your typical sanded papers aren't the same thing. They have very different feels to them, so you're not going to want to use, it needs to be a surface that is non-absorbent in order for powder blender to work and pastel mat or watercolor paper any of those not going to get you the results that you that you're looking for with using powder blender so there that is the brush that had a little bit of the powder blender on it now i'm going to go through now i am not even close to being done with his head but i'm going to go through and block in the rest of the feathers here remember when you're working the fact that you have color on the paper does not mean that that area is finished. I see that a lot, especially with beginners. They think, okay, color's there, that's done then. No, that, his head is not even a quarter of the way done. I have so, his eye and his beak are kind of close, they, but even they have a lot more work. Keep layering, and that's one of the things that's so nice with sanded paper, you can really keep layering. But you want to keep going back and adding detail. Don't, don't just stop because you've got color filled in. That, if you can spend more time on your work, refining the detail, working on your values and your contrast, that will take your work to a whole other level. You've got to remember, we're not coloring books. And I know a lot of, of colored pencil artists started with coloring books. So you want to remember this is different. When we work, when we're completing something like this, there are going to be a lot of layers. Layers are our friend. They just smudging that out. Now, in between some of these layers, there is a product called Texture Fixative. I mentioned this earlier. That is what I'm using in between layers. I just put a really light coat and that helps to make the pigment that's already on the paper stick really well. So I can go on top with additional layers and I'm not just kind of making mud where they're completely blending together. You can blend them even after you've sprayed, well, cause I spray so light, but it helps to seal it down a bit so that it's not, a, it's not getting too crazy with all of the colors blending together or where you blend and you start knocking some of the pencil off because you haven't sealed those previous layers down. So now look how I can come through with details. Now one of my things, and you've heard me talk about this before, I love dots. For fur, for feathers in here, you've got these little areas. I do a lot of dots or clusters of dots for a little, little detail. On sanded paper, look how great that shows up. It does not take very much effort to get tiny, tiny dots in colored pencil on sanded paper. Now the pencil you're seeing me use here, that is a Caran d'Ache Pablo pencil. I mostly, with working in Powder Blender, I'm going to use my Polychromos, those are my favorites. The Any of your oil-based pencils are going to be a good fit for Powder Blender. The reason that you wanna go with an oil-based one, they're going to blend better. If you use a pencil that has a very high wax content, like the, the Caran d'Ache Pablos, Caran d'Ache Luminance, Prismacolor, it sticks too much to the paper and the the colored bl or Powder Blender doesn't really blend it out very well. It blends it a little bit, not very much. Now here, I don't want those white little dots and little sections of feathers right by his nose to blend out. So that's why I switched to a pencil that had a higher wax content, knowing that it's not gonna smudge very well. So you can use your wax-based pencils on on sanded paper, but I like to save those for final layers or areas that I know I don't want to smudge. And again, there's using that Pablo. I don't have very many of the Caran d'Ache Pablos. I've not done a full review on them. I am i don't love them on hot press watercolor paper. And that's not to say that they're bad. They just don't work great for my techniques. I've seen other people use them and do great work. Not a huge fan, but I love them for small detail on sanded paper. Now you can see that piece, it almost looks like tracing paper, kind of a translucent looking paper that my hand is resting on. That is a product called Glassine. It's pH neutral or you know, acid free. And what I'm doing, I, I rest my hand on that. So one, I'm not smudging my work. The other thing is that I'm not getting the oils of my skin on my work, which is a really big deal. You don't wanna rest your hand there on whether your work is going to smudge or not. Keep your, your hands as much as possible off the artwork. So that product is great because things don't stick to it. Where You could use another piece of acid-free paper, that would be fine too, but things will still stick to it or can stick to it and cause smudging if the paper slides or moves around, whereas this doesn't. So now I'm just going through and drawing the little details of feathers. And you can get more detail than what I have here. This was a very quick rendering of feathers without being super, super 
detailed. Right now, I'm not super worried about my values, but I will come back through and hype up that contrast as I build up. Now, your first few layers will look fairly gritty, that grainy gritty look that you've heard me before talk about not liking. That's normal for your first few layers on sanded paper. As you build up, you're going to work that out. Coming back through and getting some of the darks in between the whites. And you can use the pencil to blend too. You don't only have to use powder blender to blend on, on sanded paper. You can see there where I came through with the gray, gray a moment ago in between some of the white under the eye, or those feathers under the eye and the gray patch there. I used a lighter gray pencil and just kind of smudged that over without using powder blender itself. And that I typically do more on final layers. I don't usually do that in the beginning. I find it to be way easier to use powder blender. But when you get into those final layers, I, I will usually start blending things out with the pencils alone. When you're drawing any subject, really, I was going to say birds, but it would be the case for any subject, whether it be fur or feathers, watch your reference photo. Watch how those feathers change direction. It's really easy to make a few brush strokes or pencil strokes in this case and think, wow, that looks great, that it looks like a feather, and then repeat the same thing over and over again, and now it looks more like weird confetti than the actual feathers. Watch how they change direction. And the only way you're going to know how they change direction is to either have a live model in front of you or a reference photo. But you need something to look at. Look at here how the white shows up so well over the darks. That is one of the things I absolutely love about sanded paper. And they still can't get over how little pencil fall off or you know where the pencil is drawing you get that that product fall off if you've used pastels you know what i mean where it gets very messy very dusty with pa colored pencils on sanded paper you can get that to a much 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 lesser extent it's nowhere near as messy as pastels but some of that still falls off here there was so little compared to when i've worked on other sanded papers which really surprised me And you can see the layering process here, how many layers I'm able to, to just keep going back over and it just never stops taking layers. When you're working on a hot press watercolor paper, Bristol vellum, any of those, you do hit a point where you can't get more layers on the, the project and so you have, or the paper. So you have to plan your projects out a lot more carefully when you're working on those papers than on sanded paper. With sanded paper, I can completely change my mind, decide I hate the background and rework it all together. I could make it blue if I wanted to. You can really make, a lot of adjustments as you go. It's a much, much more forgiving surface to work on in colored pencil than with your hot press watercolor type papers. The tape, the black tape that you see my paper taped to my board with, that is a pH neutral or acid free art tape. I'll have a link to all of the supplies that I'm using in the video description if you're interested in checking them out. See how he, even here where I come back through, it doesn't matter if I use a light pencil or a dark pencil, it just sticks and it shows up really well. And besides that, Karen Dosh Pablo, the all of the, the colored pencils I'm using here are my my words just failed me, my brain just shut down. The polychromos, Faber Castell polychromos. You'd think that would flow way easier for me, given how often I use them and how often I say that. <laughs> See, I just keep going back and forth and back and forth with the colors until I get things to look how I want them to. Like I was saying before, just because there's color on the paper doesn't mean it's finished. You can keep layering until it looks like what that end goal you have is. I'm going to take a light blue and just go over these a little bit. It really makes the oranges that are next to it stand out more and makes the feathers look a bit shiny. 
You've got to be careful when you use a lot of gray in the animals, whether it be a highlight or in this case, it actually, there are gray in the feathers. You have to be careful because sometimes you can really age the animal. If you want to make something look a bit more shiny, use a light blue or a light purple. It's an easy way to get a more shiny look without it being too dusty looking or aged. If it were like a dog and you're adding white highlights onto black, for example, you, which has nothing to do with this project. It's just something I'll share with you. If you add that, just use white for all your highlights, it looks gray and now it looks like a much older dog than you probably intended it to or in this case I want this to look a bit shiny and if I left everything with the grayish tone that was there on my reference photo he kind of looked a little bit more dusty than I wanted and that light blue can be the thing to make things look just a little shinier a little bit cleaner and I just work around getting little details here and there The more layers and more layers and more. I mean, there, I don't, didn't count. I don't know how many layers I put on this, but it really did feel unlimited. Even where I stopped, I never felt like I hit that point where I didn't couldn't get many more layers on there. It just kept taking as many as I threw at it. Coming through with this orangish red color, I'm gonna hype up the color saturation just a bit. The thing that really surprised me with this, I wasn't surprised that I liked it. Everything Brush and Pencil has made, I have absolutely loved. Everything from Aliona's books to her products have been wonderful. So I knew I would like it, but I figured it would be very similar to working on Fisher 400. And I, actually it is very similar. I guess that's not the best way to put it. But I thought I, I would feel like I was doing the same. I didn't think it would be an improvement or that big of an improvement other than it being actually front to back acid free, which is, is a very big deal for me. But the lack of pencil fallout, like it was much cleaner to work on. The pencil stuck to the paper better. What it still blended, but it wasn't falling off the paper. Like I was, it didn't take me as many layers to get my darks really dark. When I've worked on Fisher 400 or the UART, it took way more layering and layer and layer and spraying in between with the texture fixative in order to build up those darks. And it, it, the darks really showed up better, faster, because it was like the pencil was just sticking on the paper. If you've used Powder Blender on any of the other sanded papers, you know what I'm talking about. Those first layers are so grainy, so gritty. And here I moved through that stage way, way faster than on those papers. So even if it weren't for the fact that the other papers, I'm not real comfortable with the backs of them not being acid free, the that reason alone with how well the pencil stuck to it would be reason enough for me to switch. I don't even want to use, and it sucks because I have all that Fisher 400, so I'll probably use it for practicing or samples and such, but I don't even want to use it anymore. This paper, when I want a sanded paper, hands down, this will be the paper that I want to use. Gibson, you don't want out. There's a huge thunderstorm going on right now. Don't ring that bell. I'm not letting you out. There's lightning. It's not safe. Stay in here. Oh my gosh. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. Probably want to click on the bell notification icon too, because YouTube is terrible about notifying people when a new video goes up.